Hello everybody, welcome back to the Pink and Channels. We are here today because Norwich City have uh, made their third signing of the summer. <laughs> the third <laughs> feels like it's been a long one, doesn't it? Uh, and definitely been a long one around this man. Callum Doyle is in the building uh, on loan from Manchester City for the season. And uh, we thought who better to get some insight uh, from than somebody who watched Callum Doyle very closely during his previous loan spell at Leicester City last season where of course he was a championship winner delighted to be joined by owen uh, palmer atkin from bbc radio leicester uh, owen thank you very much for, for for joining me callum doyle and, and and leicester city it felt from the outside looking in like a pretty good fit i know there was some injuries and, and whatnot how, how do you reflect and, and how is the general reflections on his uh, on his loan stint at the club yeah, I think for Leicester City fans, when they look back on Callum Doyle, they'll look at a player who is clearly supremely proficient on the ball and uh, a player that that will probably have a very good uh, career going forward. And at just 20 years old and the kind of experiences he's already got under his belt will, uh, will give him no harm at all. But certainly a player that if you are playing a... Uh, possession-based game and you need a centre-half who has the passing range, passing angles, and then the, the kind of eyes to see the pass, and then he's then he's absolutely perfect. That Maybe he has one or two downfalls, as most most players do, particularly at his age, and, and one of those is maybe his pace, but he makes up for it with, with a very good footballing brain, very intelligent, and you can tell that he's been coached by by real, real top managers and has been in and around a Manchester City setup, which is, of course... It did been absolutely brilliant and relentless over the last few years. So it was unfortunate to see him get injured um, and be out for as long as he was. He picked up a knee and dreams out for, for a good few months. And that was a shame because he was really coming into his own. But positive reflections from a from a Leicester City perspective and and maybe one that, that fans were looking at potentially doing this summer and getting him back in the building on a permanent deal. But that wasn't to be the case. Yeah, I think when when you look at his CV, and he's clearly had a few loans throughout the the Championship, Coventry, Sunderland, Leicester as well, was a Championship winner with with you guys. How, how big a role did he play under Enzo Maresca and, and in that Leicester City squad last season? Yeah, well, he was brought in to play a, a very important role. Leicester played, and it's as Manchester City play really, and as I expect Chelsea will play this season under Enzo Maresca, this kind of three two four one formation, and it relied heavily on centre-halves being good with the ball. And that's why Yannick Vestergaard played such a big role because of how good he is. But they also needed a left-footed part of that of that back three. And, and he fit in brilliantly because, I don't know, he, he's, he's a bit of a strange player in that he has all the attributes to play as a left-back and all the attributes to play as a centre-half as well. So actually that left centre-half position in a back three is probably his ideal position. Um, he was, you know, you talked about his CV, his experience is, is brilliant for a 20 year old to have three full seasons under his belt is, 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 is almost unheard of for a 20 year old um, in this stage. So, yeah, he's a, he's a very, very good player and was very, very important initially to what to what Enzo Maresca was trying to do. And as I say, he was really getting into the, the kind of groove of things before that injury came about and then lost his place really to James Justin on the on the left hand side who's good at on the right and the left James Justin so um unfortunate maybe that he didn't play as many games as as he probably should have um but but certainly in the games that he did play uh, a very very important part of of what Enzo Mareska was trying to do yes it's it's incredible isn't it he's, he's 20 years old or he's, he's he's played over 100 games in in the football league at Manchester City is as you say is there uh, and you mentioned Leicester fans there, but is there a surprise more generally that perhaps he hasn't taken a step up to the Premier League after his, his loan spell at Leicester last season? Yeah, well, Leicester, when they brought him in on loan, my understanding is that, that they wanted to initially sign him on a permanent contract. They were really impressed with him. Enzo Mareska had, had worked with him before in the Manchester City youth ranks and saw him as an, an important part. Um, but the, the price was too high for Leicester to do a deal at that time, particularly as a, as a championship club. But yeah, I think that the... the it, the, the the question on whether this is a surprise is is interesting, isn't it? Because you you take away his age and he looks Premier League ready because mm. of the amount of experience he has. But you throw his age back in, and all of a sudden, this is a guy who you look at and think, actually, could he do with another another year? But for for a side like Norwich and for Manchester City to be able to send a player like him to to clubs like Norwich, to clubs like Leicester, to clubs like Coventry, who 
want to be in and around the top of the championship table as a team competing and to get that experience under his belt again would be I, I think is probably the reason could he play in the Premier League I think I think so I think he's proven with with Leicester last season he's proven with a, a really important uh, role at Coventry City the season before that he can he's proven with, with Manchester City in pre-season that he can do that as well so uh, maybe a little bit of a surprise but I think this is a case of Manchester City looking at this player and and seeing him as a maybe a, a potential future first teamer as someone who can come in and, and really be in and amongst it in the in the next few years and therefore getting experience in the EFL and maybe a Premier League loan next season might be the way forward. In terms of him as a player, it's interesting what, what, what you spoke about in terms of his his role, the, the way Norwich are, are going to look to play. I think it's probably relatively similar to, to what Enzo Moresca did at, at Leicester last year, but tuck the left back in, create a back three. That's a, in in that sense, and almost have him as a as a third centre back. There's been lots of talk about his ball playing ability. You've seen it in the flesh over a season. How good is he technically, and how how good is his ability to break some of those lines with with his passing? His composure is outstanding, really, for for a twenty year old. Um, the, the the he can play and play proficiently in a number of different ways. If you need the the sixty yard raking pass, that's something that he's got in his locker. He took a number of deeper set pieces for for Leicester last season as well in the initial stages and delivering balls into the box. And there is you know a, a trust there with his left foot that he is able to deliver. Uh, balls with, with sufficient quality into penalty areas. But he's also very good at stepping into the midfield, moving on to a ball that's played into him and then being able to... Or he, he was very good at creating a little bit of a trifecta between himself, Keenan Dewsbury Hall, who was the left kind of number eight, and Steffi Mavadidi as a left winger, and coming together and being able to bounce passes into Dewsbury Hall, slide players like Steffi Mavadidi in. He can play the short game. He can play the long game. His touch is excellent. And when you, when you look at the modern day centre-half, when you need those kind of things, he, he certainly has all the, the, the technical attributes, certainly, to... To really impress, I think Norwich City fans will be really impressed with him when when they are when they're able to see him play and they're able to see the the passing range and angles that he's got in his locker. Uh, and and the flip side, I guess, is is there anything else during his, his yeah? You mentioned his pace. Is, are there any other elements of his game that you think there is more refinement to to come with him? As we said, only twenty. You still have to remember, despite his experience in CV, as you said, that he's still an incredibly young man. So there probably is hell of a lot of development still within him. Where are the areas that you're looking at maybe that, that he does need to refine um, if he is going to take that next step up to the Premier League in particular? Yeah, the only two that, that really stand out is A, the pace that which can't really be coached and it's something that he's going to have to kind of learn to deal with um, across his career. And he, and he does he, he does that quite well. And he was playing alongside um, Yannick Vestergaard, who is much slower than than he is already, and they were able to forge a, a good a good partnership there. Uh, I think one of the other the other things is he is a very physical player. He does like to get stuck in. He won't duck out of challenges. He gets up. He wins headers. He's a he's a big guy, um, but but sometimes there may be that little over eagerness to go in and, and win a ball. And I guess that when those two things come together, the over eagerness and maybe a slight lack of pace. They can sometimes cause him and cause him a, a few problems jumping into challenges. But if he's playing alongside experienced centre halves, it was something that improved at Leicester. But maybe this is the reason why he's got another EFL loan because if he can go in and play uh, alongside a, a real experienced couple of centre halves for another season, that he can learn about the aspect of timing, moving into certain areas, knowing when to go and when to stop. But they're the kind of two real standout. Issues maybe is a little harsh with his game because he's a very, very good footballer, but certainly areas that that, that could be improved. Uh, and just finally, I know you've touched upon it uh, throughout this chat that, that we've had, really. But Leicester fans, is it fair to say he was he was popular during his his loan spell there? Is he someone that they they really took to? Yeah, I think so. Um, he, he he comes across as a very likable guy. I spoke to him a couple of times, and he's he's very very down to earth, doesn't really want the limelight or anything like that, just happy to come in and, and do his job and, and move on to the next thing. And uh, yeah, re really, really nice guy as well. So I think Le Leicester fans took to him pretty well, to be honest. Um, he, he's got this he's got this ability of, of 
being so consistent, you kind of don't realise he's there at times. And you go, oh, of, of, yeah, remember that tackle and that pass? That was that was amazing. And then every now and then he comes out with this 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 brilliant, brilliant bit of quality on the ball that that, that sticks in your mind as as part of the game. But he's very good at going around his business um, pretty efficiently. And yeah, Leicester fans took to him, and I and I, I can't see any reason why why Norwich fans wouldn't as well. I think this is a, a for a side that. I mean, you, I mean, you could tell me Ed, for a side that looks like they want to be going for the playoffs again this season and pushing to get back into the Premier League, having a player like Callum Doyle, who's been in a playoff final with Coventry, who has won the league with Leicester, will be a, a brilliant asset. Good stuff, Owen. Thank you very much for your time, for your insight. Good luck in, in the in the Premier League with Leicester. I think we'll we'll all be keeping an eye, particularly your set of pieces now. Uh, Andy Hughes is uh, is is there as well. And uh, yeah, thank you for your time this afternoon. Top man, thanks for having me.